Okay, so this next one is a dumbbell circuit. It's dumbbell circuit number one. So this one only requires some basic equipment, some basic dumbbells. I have just a light pair of five pound dumbbells here I brought to demonstrate, but real simple stuff. Typically when you look at dumbbells, uh, like a three, five, and eight typically comes in a set pretty inexpensively, 10, sometimes 12, 15, 20, 25, then they go in five pound increments typically. But you don't need any significant amount of weight. If you already have some dumbbells, they should be fine. Uh, but typically, most of these you're going to want at least a five pound. I know some people have one, two, three pound. They're a little bit too light. Uh, if you're just starting off, they're fine. But typically, five and up is where you want to start. Uh, for the most part, they're really inexpensive. You can find dumbbells really inexpensively. Plenty of people buy them and never use them. You can buy them used real cheap. Uh, because of the lockdown, actually one thing which is kind of interesting is the price of exercise equipment has gone up, even used equipment, because people know that they can't get it. We're not getting these imports from overseas, so exercise equipment is, is actually quite expensive right now. So if you have this stuff, or a friend has they're not using, use theirs. But again, real simple, this program is similar to the others. This is a basic dumbbell workout. It's not going to be anything crazy, difficult. Uh, it's going to be a nine exercise layout, real simple, up to three sets of each one. We're also going to be using the timer for this. So it's going to be 20 seconds of work for each, each exercise, 10 seconds of rest, and then you're going to shift to the next one. So we'll cover these again, just the same kind of format in terms of the columns. There's three columns. Our first column is all lower body. Our second column or middle column is all upper. Our third column is all core based exercises. All right, so a couple of them are gonna be using, actually all the six over here aside from the core are gonna be using free weights, dumbbells specifically. And I'm gonna show you how, how we're gonna use this and modify it to be a little bit more advanced than the other two programs. You can kind of use them together if you want or switch them back and forth. This program typically I like people to do for four to six weeks and over time you're going to gradually, in that 20 seconds, you're probably going to do more repetitions with that same weight and or get to the point where you have to increase that weight within that four to six weeks. So if you started off doing an exercise with three pounds or five pounds, probably by the end of it you're at eight to ten pounds if not more. So the main thing is not to jump up too fast, but to slowly over time change that. So initially, you might want to start off doing one set of each and working to two or three sets. After you complete those two to three sets of each, then you might want to start increasing the weights. A lot of people pretty quickly jump up in the weight. They've done one or two weeks of a certain weight and they want to jump right up. So I don't advise that as much. Anything more than a 10% increase in a week can create some other problems. So I like people to really kind of start off slow, focus on their, their form and technique, and then over time develop that to where they can increase weights and resistance. So this one, again, using dumbbells, it's all about gravity. So you're using your body weight plus a little bit of additional weight, okay? So using dumbbells is a great way. They're really cheap and easy to, to use. Obviously be careful dropping them on the floor. They will bounce. I have seen people injure their toes and things. Dropping weights, just be very careful because they will bounce, especially based on the surface you're using them on. So let's break this program down. Again, if you've seen the other videos, it's very similar to that in terms of the grid itself. There's nine exercises here. You do one to three sets of each. So you do one set, could be nine, two sets, could be you know, 18, so on and so forth, and build up from there. You're going to go from left to right, so lower body to upper body to core, lower to upper to core. So if you did one set, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you do two sets, you do one, two, three, come back, do one, two, three, then drop a level, four, five, six, four, five, six. 789, 789. If you do three sets, I recommend doing one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, then dropping down three and then three. So they're grouped in, in sets of three. Okay? So for each exercise, you would do 20 seconds of work, 
Then there's a 10 second break where you go to the next one. Now, in general, that's going to be 30 seconds per block. You can, if you want to, do three sets in that same block before you move to the next one. But it works better if you're doing a conditioning model where you're working lower body to upper to core because you're shifting positions, you're shifting what muscle you're working and not focused on one area at a time. So you, I advise going from left to right, one to three sets, and or going from top to bottom in that column. So it could be one, two, three for one set, one, two, three for two sets, and then same for three, and then shift over. Same thing, you could start at this end and work this way over. You could start from the bottom and work your way up. There's many permutations in this type of grid which make the program more interesting for your body and your mind. If you're bored and doing the same thing, you're not going to stick with it. So by changing up the direction which you do the program, it changes up the impact on your body and your mind and keeps things more focused and progress improving. So the main thing to look at with this program is the, the direction which you read it and how you're modifying it over time. Uh, there is a tracking grid that's going to come with this one as well, which is going to be here. So there's three pages to this PDF. These are the first six, and these are the other, the last three. So I'm going to go through these as we progress. The first one is a lunge. Okay, so we've done, in the other programs, we've done a couple different types of lunges, and there's many different types. When you're doing a lunge, I'm going to just use these little dumbbells here. These are just five-pound dumbbells. You can hold the dumbbells down at your side, which help with balance. You can hold them up. You can hold them over your head. There's all different positions, and it changes the exercise based on the position which you hold the dumbbells. The standard lunge, you're going to hold them at the side. This lunge could be a step lunge, meaning you step forward and then step back. It could be the same, same leg each repetition, or you could alternate left and right for that set. You could also do one set all rights, one set all lefts, and then move across. You can vary that. You can also do a step back lunge. So in a step back lunge, you're actually stepping backwards and then back upright. Both knees go to 90, and in this picture, you're focused on the knee coming toward the ground. You're never touching that knee to the ground. You never want to bang your knee on the ground when it's bent like that. You can use some damage. So focus on keeping your upper body upright, which actually the weights do help, so kind of a counterbalance and then and going up and down instead of forward and back. Your body is moving forward and back, but in essence, because of your knees bending at 90, you're, you're going up and down. You're not leaning forward, not leaning back. You're just going up and down, forward or back. So that's the first one, it's a type of lunge. If you have a long space, you could do walking lunges where you're walking straight ahead. You can also do reverse lunges on the way back. So there are different ways to do that. Just make sure when you do it, you're still around the equipment you need for the following exercise because there's only 10 seconds before you get to the next one. So again, the first one is a type of lunge, again, forward or back, uh, holding the dumbbells at your sides. Or you can hold them up, different positions as you vary and as you change. Okay, the second one in the middle is basically a lat exercise, so it's basically a bent over row. Now this picture has a woman holding a barbell. Okay, so what we're going to do with dumbbells, which are actually a little bit better for this exercise, is you're actually going to be able to twist and rotate them in. Okay, so as you're bent over like this, you can rotate and pinch your shoulder blades in the middle. Okay, so they're like this, I'm going to show like that, pinch your shoulder blades in the middle as you come up. Whereas with a barbell, you kind of stop at your chest. Whereas with dumbbells, you can kind of twist in and get a little bit deeper in. So the second one is going to be a dumbbell row. It's a twisting row. So you twist as you pull it back in. And it's going to work your upper back and help with posture. Okay, so again, that's going to be 20 seconds long. You're going to have 10 seconds to go to the next one. Okay, so the next is basically, it's a single leg jackknife. So what that's going to be is you're going to come up with both hands to one leg. Okay, you're going to alternate which leg you come up with. Alternate as you come up. Exhaling as you come up. Okay, so in this, in this picture, his arms are at his sides. He comes up and touches his leg. If you need to, you can just touch the thigh. You can touch the knee. You don't have to touch your toe. Okay, 
that is like a, a, almost a partial sit-up. So it's a jackknife sit-up or jackknife crunch. It's basically bringing one leg up to both arms, again, touching either your thigh, knee, or shin, or ankle. Okay, so again, it, it's, it's a core exercise. So we drop down to our next row. Our first one there is basically a dumbbell squat. Now, I mentioned in another video before, a lot of people don't have good technique when they squat. The first thing they do is their knees go like this. Whenever that happens, it puts a lot of strain in your knees. You actually want to sit back. So I do recommend, especially if you're using dumbbells with extra weight, is have a chair or a bench or something behind you where when you squat, you're actually sitting back to touch it. You're not sitting down to it. You're using it as a guide as, as in terms of where you want to come down to. Now, same thing like the others, like with the lunges, you can either hold the dumbbells at your sides, you can hold them up in a front squat position, you can hold them this way so they're facing your chest, you can hold them out, all different positions. Your body is still carrying that weight, right? That's more gravity. That is a foundation exercise, very great for, for establishing a good solid foundation in your, in your thighs, hips, glutes, everything, it works really well. If you're holding the dumbbells up, it's going to make you uh, sit back a bit more. Okay, if you're holding them down this way, sometimes there's a tendency to pull you forward. So when you're up like this and you hold them up or this way, it kind of shifts you back. If you tilt forward, you're going to feel it a bit more that way. So again, the position of the dumbbells is important. Starting off with light dumbbells is also as important. You don't want to put heavy dumbbells up there if you haven't done this before because your hips, as you come down in the squat, are going to move left to right. You're going to try and find that center point. So you have to focus on your form and technique before you really start adding more weight. Now if you're more advanced, obviously these are foundation exercises you can use heavier weights with, but in the beginning where you're trying to develop this stuff, it's important not to go overboard and use heavier weights. Okay, the next one in the middle, right in the center, is basically a shoulder press. Now this one shows a twisting shoulder press kind of like this, so it's from the shoulders, from a neutral position, twisting and going up. Any type of shoulder press would suffice. You could do a military press this way, you could do an alternating press, you could do a 45 degree press, anything like that. You can mix it up. There's so many different types of presses you can do. Any type of shoulder press will do. The main thing with a shoulder press is making sure you're getting a full extension. A lot of people do these short little this is not really going to help you. You need to go as far as you can. Get a full reach. Come down to about shoulder height or just above that. You don't want to go down below that because then you're actually doing like a curl to pick it up. But again, the main thing is use light weights. Start off light and develop over time. Over time, if you're doing a, a decent amount of reps in that 20 seconds and it doesn't feel like much, then you increase the weight. But keep it moving. Don't really stop and hold it. Keep, keep everything moving and flowing, especially with your breathing, same thing, your repetitions should follow your breathing. Okay, the next one, which is a core exercise, does not require any weights at all, but what we're going to do here, instead of the others in, where you're extending the leg, this one is an opposite elbow to knee, so you're just picking a knee up, staying, keeping the knees bent, left to right, again, only touching your ears, so you're not pulling on your neck. You do not want to pull on your neck. In this picture, she kind of has her hand behind. Just touch your ears. That's all you need. And you're looking left to right as you bring your opposite elbow to knee. The knees stay bent at 90. The other one stays on the floor. Just left to right. Exhale on the way up. Exhale on the way up. Inhale on the way back. Okay? Okay. So those first six are done. We're going to now go to the next row. We have a deadlift. Okay, so this would be called a stiff-legged, semi-stiff-legged, there's Romanian deadlifts, a bunch of different types, but this one is not basically a true deadlift where you're dropping your hips down. This one is a slight bend in the knees, and you're primarily leaning forward. One of the key foundation exercises as well for developing overall stability, strength, and power is very important for people with, with issues with their low back. Now, one thing to look at is you want to keep the weight as close as you can to your thighs. You don't want it out here. This picture shows them a bit out past their feet. I like to teach clients to keep the weight as close as they can, almost like they're rolling a rolling pin down their thighs. 
the, the brush can touch your thighs, can touch your knees, and go to the point in which you don't have pain in your back or hamstrings tightening up. And over time, that'll develop you know, to, to not be such an issue. You'll strengthen that, but you want to keep, keep those weights as close as you can to your shins and thighs all the way down, all the way up, just like a rolling pin. Keep your arms relaxed and straight. Your, your hands are really just holding those weights and you're kind of like a lever mechanism. You're pulling your, your, your hamstrings, glutes, and low back are working together kind of like a crane to pull those weights up. So again, relax your arms. On this one, breathing is going to be exhale on the way down because you're kind of compressing your lungs. You're going to inhale on the way up. So this one is a little bit backwards in terms of breathing because and unless you're lifting really heavy weights, you want to reverse that. But here, if you're, if you're basically, your exertion is on the way up, okay, you're, you're actually opening up your lungs. So on this one, I, I typically teach people to exhale down, inhale up, okay, because of the, the way that it's affecting your lungs and breathing. Okay, the next one, which will be number eight, is going to be a tricep extension. So in this one, it's going to be a single dumbbell, and if most dumbbells are going to have a bigger plate, but this one has a little bit bigger head on it, so you can kind of hold it. But this one is going to be this way. So you're going to keep your elbows in close, go all the way down. So go to about 90 degrees and then press it straight up. Okay? So the one big thing a lot of people do is they, they turn the dumbbell like this, which is really more work on your hands than anything. Just let it stay straight. Okay? It's all about gravity. Keep it straight. Don't hit yourself on the head. So kind of tuck your head forward slightly. And exhale as you press. On this one, you're exerting force on the way up. Exhale up, inhale back. And keep those elbows in tight. Don't let them flare out to the sides. If they flare out to the sides, you're more than likely to hit yourself in the back of the head with the dumbbell, which is what you don't want. All right, so that one as well, you could use two dumbbells. If, if it's too easy, if you only have light weights, and let's say you only have fives and eights, and that's easy, you could do it with two dumbbells. Same kind of thing like this. Making sure you're gripping the top, keep them nice and straight up, but back behind the, you know, and again, you're not going to have as much tendency to, to hit yourself in the back of the head with it if you're using two. You can use threes, fives, eights, whatever's, whatever your strength level is, and that works well as well with the tricep extension. Okay, number nine is going to be an elevated crunch. Now, one thing you can do with this, since we're using weights, is you can also use a dumbbell with this. And the way you use a dumbbell is you have your feet up, knees bent, hold the dumbbell up over your head like this, and as you crunch up, bring the dumbbell up. One thing with this is that sometimes the dumbbell actually kind of forces you up and pulls you up with the weight, but as you come down, it's tougher. So sometimes the weight helps you on the way up, but it makes it tougher on the way back. So that's a modification to this program. If you're gonna use uh, free weights with it, some people use a medicine ball. There's all different types of modifications you can do with it. So again, to go back through this program, I suggest doing one set of each, reading from left to right, and over time going to two to three sets of each, slowly, not too fast. You wanna do this program two to three times per week, for four to six weeks. You don't want to do them back to back. If you're sore, you need to space that out. If you're doing it three times a week, do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Your body grows and repairs on your rest days. You do not want to exercise all the time. If you change the direction which you read the program, it changes the impact on your body. So again, you could go from top down, you can go from bottom up, you can go from left to right, you could go all these, you know, stay in those that first column, do three sets or three rounds of those three sets and shift over. You can go this way. So by changing it, it not only makes it more fresh for your mind and challenging, it's different stimulus for your body. Now again, not jumping up too fast in weight is very important. You don't want to go from, you know, three pound weight and then a week later you're at eights. That's too much of an increase and you're going to be really sore. Soreness is good. It means you, you, you gave your body enough stimulus to break through what it's used to and now it has to adapt. So the adaptation is, is the key that we look at with exercise. Your body is changing and adapting. Now if we look down here, 
These are the page two and three of the routine. Okay, so this is, oops, again, the first six, and they're written in from reading from left to right. So it's lower body, upper body, core, lower body, upper body, core. On this, there's 15 columns. You write in your date and how many sets you did. Now, this one is different from the others because on the others, you weren't using weights. The difference on this is I typically like to write it in as uh, weight over repetition. So if you did eight pounds, 15 repetitions, you write that in. Since this is timed, typically it's gonna be over 20, or you can just write the weight that you did. If you wanna really count things out and write things down, you can do that, but with this format, you don't have to with the time. Just do more reps in that amount of time. And then you know by feeling that it was easy or not easy enough or too hard to do that. So it's kind of a natural progression that you'll go through. So this sheet and then the third sheet, which will be the last three on page two, again, lower body, upper body, core, and the last three are not on there because this is only a nine exercise layout. Now, the next one will be a bit more advanced. This, the next one is going to have 12 exercises on it. So it's a, it will be dumbbell circuit number two. This one, again, is a good foundation one, but I would recommend starting off with the body weight one, body weight two, and then moving into this. If you're a bit more advanced and have done other things, this might be a good place to start. Again, nothing crazy and, and difficult to do, just good foundational exercises. I find that a lot of people that are, are regular exercisers are doing the same thing day after day, year after year, not mixing it up and they get diminished returns on what they're doing because their body doesn't have any new stimulus. So even if you were exercising for a while and weren't doing these things, because a lot of people don't like to do lower body exercise, this might be a good place that would be challenging enough even with nine exercises. So I would not go to dumbbell circuit number two until you do dumbbell circuit number one. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I hope you enjoy this program. Stay safe and enjoy.